Hello and welcome to the Halo Forge epidemic. This is Oakley Hadef and I'm here to bring you another forging tutorial video. This one is going to be covering air vehicles. So hopefully you guys have seen the previous one which is covering creation of land vehicles. This is going to partly feed off that theme and it's going to have the same, um, the same sort of design concept. So I'm going to be building three ships. I'll cover each one uh, separately. So the first ship we're going to be building is a human one. So you're going to want to float a brace large like this. I recommend 15 degrees as your snap put another one touching it, and then mirror the same design on the other side, just like that. Leave a space, and have them overlap like this, and that's going to be your body. Then on the bottom, for a floor, flip over two platform Y larges, set them down just like that, and then bridge the gap with a wall double or any other platform piece. And now you're going to want to replicate what you have on the bottom, up on top, so you're going to add two platform Y larges, one here and one there and then again a door double right there or any other piece you see fit to cover that and so that's basically the shell of your flying vehicle for uh, for humans and then we'll go on and uh, add more stuff to it so over here I put a uh, bridge larges to cover up the sides and then as you can see the door is still open so what I'm going to do is add bridge mediums here add a 15 degree incline to match up with this part of the brace uh, tunnel and I'm going to go ahead and add a uh, a uh, turret right here just to add functionality to this. So as you can see it's self-contained and you can actually jump out the door or use the turret. Now you can also build a, an aesthetic turret here which I did um, by adding just a teleporter frame, block here, barricade large, and then uh, antennas. Then the back go ahead and add two of these building pieces just like that and then add a wall on top. And so as you can see from a distance, this does look like a frigate. And it's pretty easy to make. And it's also, as long as, as well as looking good, sorry, it also is functional. So you can have people spawn in here, jump out the sides to the bottom, or you can grab a turret and add a suppressive fire. So it's functional on the inside, and of course it has aesthetics. Uh, this gun here is taken from my gun show. So go take a look at that on how to build this. Otherwise, we will have this map up for download. Um, where you guys can come and tinker with things and see how it's actually built. Now in the back, um, you can add whatever you want. This is the functional part of it, and then after that, you add whatever you want to make it look more aesthetically pleasing. So here, uh, I use these room triples. Of course, you all know what that looks like. Put them here. And then I had a platform extra large just to cover up the hole that was here. So I'll show you on the other side. I plugged that up with the platform extra large and then I added a wall on top and it looked like a frigate. So there you go, that's one of them. And now I'm going to start a new round so we can show you the other ones. Okay, so that one's still going to be spawning over there. Now we're going to do the second human vehicle. This one is going to be the same general design as the other one, but you'll see it'll have some twists. Uh, thrown into it. So basically, again, use the uh, brace tunnel pieces once more like this. I use uh, generally a 15 degree snap and just put it down like this. So here you go. Here's one of them. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another one on the right side, just like that, and always leaving a space in between for, uh, for players. That's going to be the inside of the ship. Alright, so now I'm not going to expand it like I did all the way over here. I'm going to actually go ahead and throw one on top to have a uh, front of this that looks nice. Then as you can see on the inside, there is an open space here, so I'm going to add again platform Y large here to form the inside. And then after that I'm going to grow this out in a different way that wasn't the same as that one over there. So I'm going to put a landing pad here instead just to make it a little longer and larger. And This is going to be front loaded uh, instead of the side loaded thing over there. So the entrance, main entrance is going to be here. And so to block the walls, what I'm going to do here is put bridge larges spanning across the sides. Instead of over there, I used uh, bridges. These are actually, uh, yeah, these are the ramps and bridge larges. The other one was in platform. It's a bridge piece. So I have two of these coming across to form the wall and two on the other side. Now the tricky thing with these is there's no real rotation snap to get it to be straight, so you have to freehand these a little bit. So you go, that's how you do it. That's the main body. Then I'm going to go ahead and pl add a platform, again, Y large on the top, as I did with the bottom. And then up here, I'm going to do the same sort of general thing as I did on the top, platform Y large again, and then here you can see there's this gap, so I'm going to put in just something covered up, and in this case that's going to be a block 
three by th uh, three by three short, just right there. So there you go. This is again the main body, and then after that you add whatever you want. As you can see, it's pretty spacious. So here you have the main body, as I said, and then down under we're going to be adding an aesthetic uh, turret to it. So here you go. This is how you're going to build it. You want your teleporter frame sticking out like that. Then you want to block one by one short, just like that. And here it's at an angle. Let's make it look like the turret's on a swivel. Then the barricade large. And then you want two of the satellite pieces sticking out to make the guns. So in this case, it's going to be aiming out that way. So as you can see, that one was just over here. This one was turned slightly. Um, and this one is turned and looking down, so it looks like it's actually swiveling to try and shoot at something. Now that you have this main body here, it does look like a flying vehicle, but there's nothing to imply how it's flying. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I use this piece here, stick it out, use another strut, and then at the bottom I'm going to actually put a grav lift to imply that this is how it's floating. Now obviously you can't have one, so I'm going to do multiple ones of these over here and on the other side. So this is how this thing is supposed to fly. Um, it's kind of a hybrid between a human design, which was the main body of it, and then over here it's a little more of a, a covenant design because you see the grav lift coming off of it, but I guess it could be either human or covenant. Um, and the way you would sort of indicate that is maybe if you add more details, the gun clearly here looks human, um, but you could make it look covenant. So this is how you want to make um, the basic vehicle, add the body, similar to this, which is just kind of a container with interesting sides, and then you can either add huge wings, you can add a block in the back, like that to make it look like a, more of a frigate, or you can have small things here that kind of hold it off the ground. Um, and then as you can see, you always want to have implied design here. I had these both at an angle, because that way it looks like it's hovering, um, and the force is equalized, so this one is kind of hovering in place. What you could do if you want to imply that it's uh, maybe taking off or moving along is you would turn this like that, and then you would turn the grav lift um, just like that. And so when you look at that, it looks like the ship is taking off going up that way. So that's kind of cool. You can apply different things just on the positioning of your uh, gravitational <laughs> supports or whatever you want to call these thruster things. So there you go. Uh, as I said before, these all have functionality. You could stick a turret here. Uh, you could have people spawn here. You could maybe even have a warthog that would shoot out the back. Now I'm going to go ahead and show you the third vehicle. Okay, so the first two were, well the first one was strictly human. The second one you saw here was human, maybe, boarding on Covenant. And so what I'm going to build the third one over here is going to be a Covenant uh, Spirit dropship. So it's pretty easy to make. What you want to do is use these bridge uh, larges set them together like that. As I said before, there's no real way to snap it to be straight, so you're going to have to freehand these uh, to spin them just right. So float them off the ground, have two like this touching, then you're going to make the cockpit, use two block uh, two by ones like that, and then one in front facing this way. Then you're going to go ahead and mirror what you had on the right side and put it on the left side. So there you go. And those will be where the troop uh, sort of positions are. So now that you have that, uh, <laughs> now that you have that, sorry, um, you're going to put these block 5x1s at a slant like that, top and bottom, and then you're going to put more here, and then you're going to replicate the same thing on the other side. So you have those here, and you have another row here, and when you do this, you want to make sure there's enough room for people to get out, both human and covenant. Now, back over here, we're going to work on the cockpit a bit. So you have the blocks to make the core. Then in the platform section, you use corner two by two, two of them like that. Then what you're gonna get, uh, sorry, tongue twister. Then what you're gonna do is up top, you're gonna add a strut. So that's pretty good. You can leave it like that, but I'm gonna add a little more detail. So as you can see, you have the strut here. What I'm gonna do is sort of fill in the gap down here. So another block, two by one, sticking out the bottom. And then after that, I'm going to add more details to show that it's really a Covenant ship by making a Covenant gun. So the way I'm going to do that is by having a Covenant crate actually situated right here. Uh, so first, put your teleporter frame to hold it. Then you're going to put your Covenant crate. Um, and the way you do that is actually you would place the crate first, put it on phase, so you would have the crate sticking out right there, and then you would bring this down. So that's how, generally how I do that. So there you go, it's going to be like that. And now that I have the crate here, I'm actually going to have the antennas um, 
sticking out of it to make it uh, like the turrets you see on the spirit dropships. So there you go. And that's basically how you're going to imply this is a covenant ship, is by having purple colors all over it. So by doing that, you have the crate. Uh, you can also go ahead and add the colors. So hit X on the object, go down to object color, and flip it over till you get to purple. And that'll make lights all over this to make it look more covenant. And then another thing I did is I um, merged a covenant barricade right there just to give it more light and purple effect. So as you can see, this is clearly a covenant spirit dropship. It's the right shape, size, it's functional, you can stick people in here, uh, and the turret looks pretty good. So there you go. This is how to make three different ships, and they can range from human to covenant, and then somewhere in between, and you can use the basic steps that I've shown you here to make your own. So basically what you would do if you want to make your own human ship is make some sort of box like this for the functionality and then add whatever you want to the tail end to make it a bigger ship. Maybe you want to use this box and give it big wings. Maybe you want to give it uh, some sort of thrusting mechanism like that one. Uh, do whatever you want. Um, but if you want to sort of build off what I have here directly, we will have a download link, so make sure to check that out. So th these are the different vehicles. And of course, you can use them for all sorts of different scenarios. Say an invasion, the Covenant are invading, um, what you could do in one of the many phases would be to have just Covenant spawn on a dropship, they go out and then they go and attack whatever territory. So what you could do in a phase is have several of these located maybe around the perimeter of a human bunker here, and the humans maybe have turrets trying to shoot and all those dropships coming in all around them, so that would be really cool. Uh, maybe if you just want to make an infection map or something, or maybe Slayer, this could also come in handy as just a spawn area and then you come down and definitely to your theme. And then also these two other ships, you could use them technically I guess in invasion if the humans are invading or if you want to make a Slayer map where one of the bases is up in the air, uh, something like that. Maybe Big Team Battle, this is your home base. You have a turret sticking out here, maybe a Warhog spawn here so you can actually let me go ahead and do that. So if you want to add more functionality to this, what you would basically do is have this be, say, your mothership on one side of the base, or one side of the map, and then the other team would have the same thing on the other side of the map. And then each team would get their own warhog. And the nice thing about having a floating base is in this case your warhog can't be stolen. So here, I would get the warhog, I would fly out, and then I would go into battle. So that's kind of a cool way to, um, to make home bases. And then what you can also do is... Um, let me just grab this. So you could make it also defensible. You could have a turret here. If you don't want a warhog to shoot out, you could have a turret here to kind of defend the area. And say this is CTF or something, you could have the flag position right down there. So that'd be kind of a cool way to do this. And it would definitely prevent uh, spawn camping and all that stuff, uh, especially in invasion. Now, another th cool thing you could do in invasion is say you have this vehicle be, okay, some, let's say you make it as the, um, the humans are attacking. So what you do is you have this big vehicle appear, right, in the beginning. So your vehicle is here, humans drop out on foot and start taking stuff out and attacking. And then what you could do actually is maybe second or third phase, you could have um, a warthog spawn and it would spawn in the air and drop. So what you would have is kind of like in campaign where you have the pelicans drop you off a ship. You could have that replicated in invasion by having this as a, uh, set it as a label, invasion vehicle, and then give it whatever phase you want it. So say you're fighting, you're fighting, you're fighting. You get to the second phase and then uh, that disappeared, but you're fighting, you're fighting, fighting, second phase appears. And then this ship will drop you a warthog. And then what you can also do is Maybe you don't want a warthog, maybe you want this thing to be carrying something much, much stronger. So you can have also this big ship be dropping off a, uh, a scorpion or something that's not going to fit. So I'm going to drop that. So what you could do is have, <laughs> it's also not going to fit, is you can have your big ship, well you get the point, basically. You can have your ship drop off anything, it could even drop off weapons or something like that. So that's, so pretend you were playing Invasion, that would spawn like that, which is kind of cool. And then you hit the third phase and this thing will drop down. And you have your, your tank for the phase, it's been dropped off by this big vehicle, and then you drive off and join the battle. So that's one way to add something really cool to your map. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, tutorial on how to make uh, flying vehicles. 
And if you have more questions on the design, go ahead and pose them here, but I would strongly recommend actually downloading the map and just tinkering around with it. And the cool thing is, I'm still gonna have the timers that I use on this map. So as you load up the map, there'll be nothing on the map and slowly the vehicles will be built in stages. So that way you can see you can basically get the tutorial that I've done here without my voice and then you can tinker with it as it's growing and stuff so that also show you really how to build these vehicles and then once this is all done you can pull the vehicles apart see what they're made out of, see the angles I used, all that stuff and edit them to your heart's delight so um, that's it for this episode, thanks for watching uh, and we'll keep bringing you more and more of these videos so thanks guys, hope you enjoyed